like Abu Bakr al-Anhu and Ibn Mas'ud and in their early days of Sirah, how they were beaten so severely when they're defending the Prophet and I'm reading Quran and Mas'ud recited Quran al-Rahman in front of the Kaaba. And you couldn't, they say you couldn't recognize his face. You can recognize his eyes from his nose, from his nose. It was just so, so bad. And I, I literally saw somebody like that. But his story is amazing. Like he was in, he was in a home that was struck under the rubble for eight days, eight days. On day four, the soldiers came into the home looking for people alive. And anybody who was alive, they killed. He made a dua. He's telling us this. So, so just rewind for a second. When you're in the emergency room, there's, there's, it's full. There's no space. There's no beds. There's no, like, there's people everywhere. There's patients who are waiting to go upstairs, patients who are living there because they have nowhere to go, patients who are waiting to go to their operating room. It's just overwhelmed, right? So this family comes to get me. They say, can you come see our family member? So I go to see him. He's in the triage area. What was the triage area? The ER. He's waiting to go to surgery. His face from here up is, is wrapped. So I can't see his face. I'm talking to him, but I can't. All I see is part of his lip that's ripped open, hanging down. So this is what I'm seeing as I'm hearing this. And so he's telling me his story and his nephews and niece are around him and they're, telling, they're all telling me, he, the patient, and then they're telling me what happened. So he's like, we, we were struck in a, in a home, eight days under the rubble. Day four, the Israeli soldiers come in, look for people who are alive, and if they were, they killed them. And at that moment, when the soldiers came in, he made a dua. And Before said, you say that dua, just pause and let people sort of understand how, when you say these people are Nazis and like worse, subhanAllah, in so many ways, like they walk into a home, they murder whoever's left alive on purpose. He says, oh Allah, like you saved Yusuf alayhi salam from the, from the bottom of the well, and like you saved Yunus alayhi salam from the belly of the well, and like you saved Ibrahim alayhi salam from the fire, save me. And so they either thought he was dead or they didn't see him and they left him. Why would they think he's dead? Sheikh, his face was covered, wrapped up. I didn't see his face. When I saw his face later, when he went to the operating room and I saw him, he, his face was unrecognizable. It was ripped open. There was no, you couldn't see his eyes. You couldn't tell his eyes from his nose, from his mouth. There was nothing left. It was just his face ripped open. And he's saying, he's telling me the story and he's saying, subhanAllah, I mean, just imagine like something on your face, like a pillow on your face. You feel uncomfortable after something because it's hard to breathe and like his face is blasted open and he's under the rubble for eight days until his family found him. And he's, he made this dua and he said, Allah save me. He said, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. And he's making the, actually, I have his, his masbah. This is, this is his masbah that he gave me. He's literally, as he's telling me the story, he's making dhikr. And then, and so I'm, I'm, I'm just, I don't even know what to say. I don't even know what I said to him, but I said, I said whatever words of encouragement, whatever I could say, and then I walked away. When I walked away, I said, I, I have to go back and ask, talk to him more. So I go back, even though the ER is good, I said, I need to hear more from him. So I go back, I just, I had one question. I said, because you think about this, right? The people who are under, under the rubble for this long. So I just, I, I just had that one question for him. I said, you know, what were you doing? What was going through your mind? And of course he said, he's making dhikr of Allah. But he said, the hadith that was going through my mind as the hadith Qudsi where Allah says, وَعِزَّتِي وَجَلَالِي I swear by my honor and magnificence لَا أَجْمَعُ عَلَىٰ عَبْدِي خَوْفَيْنِي وَلَا أَجْمَعُ لَهُ أَمْنَيْنِ I will not cause my, my, I will not allow my slave to have two senses of fear or two senses of security. فَإِنْ أَمِنَنِي فِي الدُّنْيَا أَخَفْتُهُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ And so if he feels secure from me in this world, I will cause him fear in the Day of Judgment. And if he has fear of me in this world, I will give him security on the Day of Judgment. So he's saying this, this is the hadith for eight days that kept him going. That Ya Allah, I am under the rubble, I am alone, massive injuries, pain, everything you can imagine, no food, no water, whatever it is. But I fear you, oh Allah, just give me security on the Day of Judgment. I mean, in al it's just strange, like where does this tawfiya come from? Where does this... And have come from this like inspiration from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why that's why when he was telling me this, and I again say in order, then he said, Here, he drew me close to him and he, he gave me this as a gift. So I'll, I'll hold on to this. SubhanAllah. And then I gave him a misbah I had, I gave it to him. I said, You make the cut on that. Maybe I get some other reward. I want your reward. How do you survive eight days under the rubble? How do you? That's that, that's what's amazing. He's like, SubhanAllah, he made the I tell Allah, save me. What I would expect medically, if somebody's under the rubble for eight days, that they would have 
you know, kidney failure, their potassium would go high, that would stop their heart, and they could die. Just from that alone, they could die. And subhanAllah, his kidney function was normal. Tajib. It's like, it's like, to me, it's like, it's like a miracle. Like, I don't understand how he should be alive in that situation under the for eight days. But he made a dua to Allah saying, Oh Allah, save me, and Allah saved him. He took away his eyesight. One eye was just completely just destroyed from the, from the injury, and the other one had shrapnel through the eye. I'm going to tell you level of pain, his face ripped open, shrapnel through the eye. And that was the one fear the surgeons had was, was you know, alhamdulillah, subhanAllah, mashallah, they, they put his face back together. Uh, it's amazing, his post-surgery picture, I was like, wow. Because before, it's unrecognizable. It didn't look like a face. It didn't look like a face. But afterwards... I think people, people that, that image of like the kid that was run over by the tank handcuffed and like, it's like, it's hard to describe like open flush, like just complete yeah. open flush. Yeah. Right? It looks like a can of something open. Yeah, right? and plus it's like flesh is now dying. So you see like the open flesh plus like, you know, necrosis, like black tissues, like it's just a lot, you know, you, 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 literally can't, you can't make you out can't, what's what. You can't tell it's a face. SubhanAllah. But yeah, he's, I mean, SubhanAllah, he, he, Allah tested him. But SubhanAllah, look, look, look the test Allah gave him. He tested him with eyesight. And what does the hadith of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the one who Allah tests with Habibatay, his two eyes, you know, thumma sabar, and he's patient. Awatuhu, awatuhu minhuma al-jannah, right? That I will compensate him as a result of his patience for losing his eyesight, paradise.